thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> um, the session on SAT and ID requirements. This is all new with College Board. Fairly recently, you probably saw in the news a year or so ago, the young man up in New England who was making a lot of money going to take the SAT for other people. <laughs> he had quite a lucrative business going. And so a lot of the new policies that are in place for College Board for security are thanks to him um, and a few other people that they caught cheating and doing things throughout the years. But um, a lot of it came to a head when they caught him going in and taking the test for other students. So beginning with March of 2013, students that are taking the SAT will have to have photo identification. They have to upload the photo onto their registration form as part of the registration. And then they have to show up at the SAT test center, whether it's here at school, and some of our kids qualify to take the test here um, on a national SAT test day, but here at school because of their accommodations. Many of our students, though, have to go to an SAT test center where no one is going to know them and they're going to have to follow all the same policies as anybody else taking the SAT. So that's why we're doing this tonight. Um, it's important, I think, that our students understand it, but um, because they get very anxious about testing anyway mm -hmm. and tend to kind of want to ignore it and, and have it go away, I think the parents need to understand and be able to help them with the registration process because you're going to be with them that Saturday morning when they get ready to leave and go take the SAT to make sure that they have the proper identification with them. So I've given you a handout and it's also, um, you can find the same information on College Board's website. And if you just go to um, collegeboard.org or collegeboard.com, it will bring you to the same place. And in the search bar, if you put in photo requirements, all kinds of information will show up there that you will be able to access. So, um, acceptable identification. Um, they are listing for you all kinds of identification that, that can be used. You will have to follow that. A test center can refuse a student entrance if you don't meet all of the requirements. So it has to be um, a government like license um, permit with the picture on it. A school ID will work if it's from a school that you currently attend. It has to be an original document, cannot be a photocopy document. It has to be valid, current. So if a student has, I don't know, for example, a license that expired even yesterday and they're taking the SAT today, they're not going to let them in using it. It cannot be a, an expired one. It has to have their full name on it as it appears on their registration form. Okay. So that's important also as you get ready to help them register for the SAT, thinking about how you're putting the name in, that it matches that driver's license or their permit or their school photo ID that it's exactly the same. Sometimes on our documents here at school, we might use, if the student goes by their middle name, we might put that on. And that's not gonna work then to get into the SAT because you're gonna register them with their first name, middle initial, last name. So thinking ahead as you do the registration to all of these pieces is gonna be important. Um, Probably one of the most important parts, too, is that it's a recognizable photograph and that they haven't changed their appearance. So if a student goes ahead and <coughs> registers now for the January test, they upload their photo, and then the week before the SAT decide to dye their hair purple, which one of our seniors did, um, <laughs> and they show up at a test center with this picture, with their nice brown hair, you know, or maybe nice long brown hair, and they show up at the test center with real short purple hair, the test center can say, no, I'm not letting you in. This doesn't look enough like you to be able to use this identification. And they can refuse them entrance in to take the test. 
Um, and it has to be in good condition. So if they've got a license that has been through the washing machine five times and through the dryer and it's bent and just a mess, they can also refuse an entrance because it's in too bad a shape to really tell that the person is them. Okay, so they have gotten really picky with this. Um, okay, so government issued license, official school, um, ID card, a passport is acceptable. Government issued military or national identification card, I doubt any of our kids have that. If, if you have a student who's getting ready to take the SAT and they don't have any of those, they've not applied for their license, their permit, the school ID is not going to work because the name's not matching or whatever, there is a form that I can fill out here at school and sign and stamp and the student signs it and we attach a picture to that form and they can take that with them on test day where we're saying yes, this is that student. We are verifying that they are who they say they are and that that picture is really them. Okay, But you still have to, on the registration, have uploaded a picture. Now, they don't have to go, and this is probably important too, they don't have to go on test day with the same picture that you uploaded for the registration. Those two pictures don't have to match. It's just that whatever picture is on that registration has to match what they look like there that day. Okay. So let's look at it. the photo requirements. There's directions here on how to upload how to upload the pictures, um, but some other information that you need to know also. It has to be clear, properly focused. The picture could not be grainy or they won't accept it. Okay. Um, not to have discernible pixels or be grainy, be correctly exposed. It cannot be too dark or too light. It has to be taken full in the face. They won't accept a side view of a student. They will not accept pictures that have more than one student in the picture. Even if one person is more prominent in the picture and the other one's a little bit to the back, they will not accept that. They will reject that registration because then they're not sure which person you're really looking at. It needs to be just a headshot. They will not accept a full length picture of the person. Um, be clear enough so that it, there's no doubt who it is. Not too dark or light, we said that. Um, and then again, not an outdated look. So somebody who has changed their looks tremendously between the time they registered and the time that they go to actually take the SAT it, that's going to be a, a problem, an issue, and they may not let them in. Um, the other thing is that once you upload a picture and that's in their file as part of their registration, then you can continue to use that same picture. So if somebody goes to take the SAT at the end of their junior year, and again two or three times during their senior year, you can continue to use that same picture as long as they haven't changed their looks a lot. If they change their looks, the hair color, the hairstyle, piercings, add a tattoo <laughs> or something, then you have to send in a new picture as part of the registration and update their file so that it does match what they look like. Okay. Questions? You're all doing something. Okay. <laughs> Discussion, questions? Yes, no? So on the website, there is all this information, tells you exactly as you go through the registration process how to upload that picture, get it attached to the registration, and then on the um, day, well, hopefully a day or two before the SAT, you print out the registration ticket, and that's what the student takes with them, whether they test here at school or they test someplace else. They take that with them along with their identification and the two don't have to be the same picture, but it has to match them. And they show that to be admitted into the test center. And then there's about four other times throughout the day that they have to continue to show 
the identification. Um, at the end, as they collect up tests, they're going to make sure again that the ID that you have with you matches the registration that you have with you. And two or three other times throughout the day while they're testing, there will be checkpoints where they're going to check that again. If the student gets up and goes to the restroom during the testing and then comes back into the test room, they have to take that ID with them and they have to show the ID again to get back into the test room. If they don't do that, they can say, we're not letting you back in the room and maybe they're only halfway through the test and they're done. So this is why this is so important to help our kids understand that these things are going to happen and that they have to, to be ready for that and, and know that they have to have the identification with them and they're going to have to produce that several times. Um, so on your packet, too, you also have some other resources. I added some other things for SAT. Um, anybody interested in knowing whether there's SAT prep classes around the area? <laughs> yes? Sure. Um, UNCG quite often will run a class, and if you just look on their website and type in SAT <coughs> prep in the search bar, it will come up with any information if they have one coming up. Usually, leading up to the October SAT in the fall and the usually the March or April SAT in the spring, places like UNCG, Guilford College, um, sometimes Greensboro Day School will run SAT prep sessions just to lead up to those SATs because those are kind of the two bigger times of the year to take them. And that's a, a good time to be looking for that. Some of the other, like Sylvan Learning Center, Huntington Learning Center, will do either group sessions for SAT prep or they will do individual tutoring sessions. So if a student needs to really focus on, say, the reading part and not the math so much, that can be then structured for them, that you're just looking at the reading sections of the SAT or vice versa. Um, if you do nothing else, signing your child up for um, the SAT question of the day. Through College Board, you can set up an account and everybody, all the students will need to at some point have an account because that's how they register for the SAT. <coughs> Once you set up that account, you can also um, set up a question of the day that comes to their email and then every day, hopefully, <coughs> They're looking at the question and seeing the format of the test. It gets them familiar with the format. Um, there are all kinds of free SAT prep materials on the College Board website. There are free materials on the CFNC.org website, College Foundation of North Carolina.org has all kinds of free materials for the SAT and the ACT. Do you all suggest that they do ACT? Um, if they want to, yes. Mm -hmm. It's um, a similar registration process that they go through. The test is a little bit different. What I usually suggest to the students is before they make up their mind, they know what the SAT format looks like because we do the PSAT here at school. So in 9th, 10th, and 11th, they get a taste of that by, by sitting for the PSAT. So they know how the questions are asked, how the scoring works, all of that. The ACT is a little bit different format. It's more like an end of year test than the SAT is. And again, there are free materials online through the ACT website. So I tell the kids to go on, look at that. Um, sometimes I have materials in my office that I can show them. What I hear from our students who have gone to take the ACT is that they think it's a lot more reading than the SAT is, and they thought the SAT was bad enough. <laughs> um, but they, they think it's a lot more reading. Um, the extended time with the ACT makes it even longer 
than the SAT, which is tiring. For our students, now they, 6, 10 and time for session 3. If they have 50% extended time, they're at the test center for about six hours on a Saturday. If they have 100% extended time, they test over two days. They come in on a, a Friday or a Saturday and test for about four hours and then again on Sunday to finish it up. So, I think you have to just weigh all of those things. We have one senior who just took the ACT and he he liked it, but he is a tremendous reader and a fast reader. So he did it without extended time, just with the regular time, and it wasn't quite so lengthy, and he enjoys reading.